In this video, we're going to talk about how long should you start and stop campaigns for so that you can know if they're actually working. So if a campaign starts and it seems like it's tanking, how long do you give it before you scrap it completely? We're going to talk about that in this video. What's up, everybody? My name is Brandon Brashears, and this is the Digital Marketing Madman channel. I hope that you uh, be sure to consider subscribing if you like this video and also give it a thumbs up. So today we're going to talk about how long should you run ad campaigns. Now this is a question I get all the time. And unless I know, well, I'm going to start by saying that most of the time the answer for this is 72 hours. It depends completely though how much you're spending and um, kind of what your objectives and goals are for it. And also what your experience level is with your customers and your clients. So I'm going to explain all of those and unpack that really quick here. If you're spending $1 a day and you're only getting like let's say 200 impressions, it's going to take you a lot longer to get enough data to figure out if the campaign is working or if it's not working. Now, if you jump out and you start spending like 150 bucks a day and then you want to scale that up and grow that, you're going to be able to find out a lot faster if it's working. Now, there's two kinds of separate things that we need to think about here. We need to make sure that the offer is something that's proven. And if it's not, then we're going to have to do a lot more testing and it's not going to be able to be necessarily like attributed to the ads not performing right away. So I want to assume that you have an offer that you know your clients want, then you know that works. So we're trying maybe a new, a new medium or a new target. How long should we be running this for? Now I like to give it 72 hours because uh, a lot of times when I'm optimizing for conversion events, it's, we'll see a quick jump in, in ad expend and we'll optimize those down typically. Um, and it takes a little while for the Facebook algorithm to really understand what, or Google ag algorithm, um, to figure out what your offer is all about and who's it best to show for. Um, Facebook reps will tell you that they need at least 50 conversions per week. Um, and Google says that they want about 15 conversions per day to get enough data to then really optimize your, your offer and things. So I think that's actually a pretty good rule of thumb especially when you're on Facebook and you're trying to run an ad campaign, make sure that you're able to generate 50 conversions before you decide um, to scrap an event. Now, depending on, I mean, if you're way, way out of cost as far as your cost goal and what you need to hit, then you're going to have to scrap it before that. But I think that giving it a few days to figure out exactly who to be showing the ads for and hopefully it can get to a point where you are generating sales or you're generating leads. Um, that's typically where I like to do it. Now, if I already know the audience and the ad, and let's say it's not the first time I've run ads, I'm thinking like for clients, so there are certain clients that I know 100% when I run a new ad, or I'm testing a new creative, I know what my range should be and where it should be falling into. And if on the first day we're way out of range, I will scrap it completely. So it just comes down to how well you know your target audience and how well you know that they should respond to certain things. Um, I'm thinking of a client that I worked with now for over a year, and when we run ads, we are going to expect to generate between leads between four and seven dollars for email addresses. And so if we put something out and it's dramatically performing worse or better, we know to pretty quickly scale that out and, and stop it. So in, in that case where I know the audience really well, I will stop it within 24 hours. And it's actually pretty interesting. If you start campaigns, you can see especially when you have a lot of pixel data already running through there, you'll be able to start an ad and really see results right away, which is pretty cool. So um, if your ad is not performing well, and that means that we're getting clicks, we're getting clicks that are appropriate cost, and also getting traffic to the website, and the website just is not converting well, then we need to figure out, is it something that we should do for targeting? Is it something that we should change for the landing page or is it the offer that's not there? Now, sometimes the offer is, is not right. And if the offer is not right, then the whole thing won't work. So you want to make sure that you know that the offer you have is something that people actually want and not just the, something that you think they want. The only way you can test that is by sending traffic to it. So typically I like to make sure that I have kinds of checks and balances between each kind of level of the funnel. Right, so at the ad set, at the landing page set, and then at the offer set. So for example, I will take a look and see who is commenting, who's liking, who's sharing. 
Uh, I'll give you an example, two things that I did recently. So I was doing a campaign for um, a veterinary conference. I did some targeting that was interest-based and then started running it. And right away we saw likes and comments and shares and things. And so I spot checked and I went through and I kind of did some Facebook stalking of the people. I said, okay, what's this person? What's their job? They're engaging with this post. Okay, we're, we're right on in this targeting. Then I'll give you an example. I did a post uh, of a piece of content that was awareness for my podcast page. And I went through and I was looking at the people who were engaging with the post. And it was like independent business owner, like MLM people. And I was trying to target people in the veterinary industry. I was like, what is going on with this targeting? It was a weird look like audience that was not working. And so I was like, this isn't working. Shut it down right away. Change the targeting. And then it started working. So having a spot check like that is really important. And then the next level is when somebody opts into something, do a little bit of research, find out who they are. It's pretty easy to tell typically if you're doing business to business or if you're doing um, you know, specialty product for a niche, you can typically go and find that person, see what they're into online and say, yep, this is the right person that fits into my client avatar and then go from there. So I find that it's really helpful to look at that. And then if you're generating clicks and leads that are the right people that are in your demographic and they're just not buying the offer, the chances are your offer is off and hundred percent it's off. So a lot of times I'll do webinar funnels, for example, and um, it just, sometimes we have clicks and, and leads, but then not the webinar people show up and they don't buy. So obviously the offer is not there. It's not the right offer. We need to figure out how to retailer the offer to make it something that they actually want and not something that we think they want. So that's, I think, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they try and mask a bad offer with marketing and just shove more leads into the funnel. And that doesn't end up helping you. You wanna make sure that the offer is solid and you know, figuring out what the, cu the customer value journey is to get them in the door and to turn them into clients is so important. That's the, all the back end work that you do before campaigns even start. So figure out what it is that they want and then try and deliver it to them in the simplest form. That's what marketing is. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as simple as you can make it. So think about the offer. The offer is ultimately where you need to start and what you need to fix. But I hope this was helpful. I know that we kind of got off topic there a little bit, but I think that hopefully it gave you some context into what a digital marketing agency does when they're running at ads and what their kind of position is about how long should we be running ads and how should we be testing to see if they're working or not. If you have any questions or comments or need help with anything, please comment below. I'm always happy to help. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider, consider subscribing. I make daily marketing videos here and I talk about building my digital marketing agency. I'll see you on the next video. Everybody have a great day.